Well, as you can judge from the title of this video, Nick has brought his first Focus Mark 1, the one with many, many, many different problems. And uh, we're going to uh, help uh, make his car a little bit better with some new parts, kindly donated by Dave. Thank you very much, sir. You know who you are. Uh, well, I hope you do know who you are. Um, so hopefully by the end of today, that focus will be in a much uh, better position. So it might be a bit more ad hoc with the camera work. Nick might be doing some camera work for me. It depends how things go and how the day runs. And hopefully we can sort a few things out, namely an exhaust manifold flexi leak. Uh, so we're going to change the whole manifold. So there's quite a few parts to go on this car and, uh, I think it's good to go and get cracking. Oh, by the way, bit of news that Nick's just told me. Um, he took the £400 diesel Focus Mark 1 to the wheel alignment place, have some tyres and wheel alignment. And he was told that um, by the tyre fitter that one, for some reason they couldn't fit a tyre because they weren't insured to use a blowtorch to undo the lock nut, a tyre place not having gas to undo lock nuts. I think that's a, a bit crazy, to be honest. Um, and secondly, there was some play in the rack on the driver's side only. Um, no, I don't think that's the steering rack. I think that's the um, outer joint, the, uh, the outer track rod knuckle. Um, it is a smoothed knuckle from the factory, so you need a special tool to clamp it and twist. Uh, so that would be on the list of jobs, but overall it's okay, but it can't be uh, up for, it can't be basically properly uh, aligned. So anyway, let's get outside and work on this lovely car. Oh, right, Project Ruby's gonna have a, a bit of a break and uh, Nick's already started work. Hello, sir, with Hello. your fancy, glo fancy gloves today. And I've always uh, lost a screw. You've already lost a screw. You've lost a screw already. It's good day today, isn't it? Okay. So you've lost a screw out the headlight, the uh, sun visor already. Uh, it it has gone in the car. Some over there. Somewhere. Oh, it's all right. That's no problem. We'll find that at the end. We'll fi we'll find it. It hasn't gone on the floor, as far as I'm aware. No, no. I, I, I no, no. Okay, so that's fine. Well, we've got this car back today, and we've got a number of jobs to be getting on with. Uh, we've got all the tools. Uh, to be getting on with and uh, well the first thing is we've got to let the exhaust manifold uh, cool we've got to let it cool quite considerably haven't we um, we don't want to get burnt anyway um, airbox we'll take that off straight away first of all now there is one problem this screw here is completely seized and we haven't got screws with the air box we've got. So we're going to have to just use these three screws and just hope it seals good enough for now. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll swap that over. Right, first of all, because the new air box does not come with this blank piece, it, this piece on mine is where the, um, the MAF um, sensor goes. But if you haven't got a MAF and you've just got a MAP sensor like this one, that's quite a nice sticker there. Uh, it's been uh, the alternator's been changed for a, a Remy one. No, ah, quite interesting. It's already starting to get rather powdery. Um, yeah, so you need to take these two screws out with a Torx T25. Uh, you can't use this with that one because you can't get the screwdriver in. So you need a bit, which Nick has just brought. There you go. That's too big. Is that too big? T25. No, the handle. Oh, okay. I'll get my... Hold on. I'll get the quarter inch. Oh, well, this is going to be a very long episode because for some reason, that screw there that I've just taken out is a... Right, that's a T25. Well, we tried a T25 with this one and it's too big a socket. So I've had to do a T20. So we've got a T20 and a T25. Well, what sort of logic is that? Right. I can't actually get to that. I don't know why, but my brain isn't quite switched on this morning. So we'll just take what should be a clip. Um, it isn't a clip. It's actually um, a Jubilee clip. Um, I have got some spares. Would you want me to replace this with a nice shiny Ford one? Yes. Yes. I'll get that sorted. Um, I've actually got a few of them. 
Um, I might do with that one. That might be a bit of a pain, that one. But since it's looking nice and shiny, we might keep that on. Um, I'm just suggesting because this one's gone really rusty um, and a bit of an eyesore. But I've, I'll give you a, a genuine Ford one. And I've got the, the tool to clip it into place. It's not that hard either. Right. Do you want to give it a pull? You just give it, yeah, give it a, that's it, lovely. Look at that. Ooh, that's nasty. We can't have that. It's actually rusted onto the rubber. What are you sniffing for? Petrol in it. Pe petrol. Oh yeah, sure, petrol in a petrol car. How original <laughs> is that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right, okay, now we can get access to that screw. Oh, this is tight. Yeah, pop it off. Yeah, yeah, it will come off. Well, that will come off. Yep, that's come off. Uh, that's just to give us, because that's got to be swapped onto the new air box. So just take the old air box off by giving it a wiggle. There's nothing keeping it on. It's just held on with four rubber bungs. So just give it a pull. That's it. Done. There you go. It's just, there we go. Actually, three, it's three legs. One, two, three legs. And it just comes out, right. What we've got to do is take these screws out and swap everything over and that'll be job done. That looks okay down there. Good, good, good. And it just slips over that. You'll, you'll feel it sort of push onto the actual air intake. Right, okay, I've taken the three screws out. This screw is the problem child. It just literally, it's seized onto the bottom part. It won't, they just won't come apart. So, uh, you want to do the honours and just split it apart. Just don't worry if you break it. I'm just going to snap it. Just snap it because it's coming off. There we go. Need to get that filter out. That looks as if it has been crushed, actually. Probably, Probably the way it me. was fitted and all that. Maybe. Because it was like that, wouldn't it? Just put it in. Yeah, exactly. So you've had to sort of bend it to get it in. And, it, yeah, it won't sit properly. Right, okay, well... I'll leave you to swap that over because you've got the screws and just swap it over and put it in there. Oh, yeah, we need, I think we need to give that a bit of a clean because that's your oil breather, ideally. S sand on it. Oh, actually, hold on. Have we got one in the new one? I swear we did. I'm sure you mentioned that. That's... There you go. Yeah, I did. I cleaned that. So that can go in the bin. We'll use that one. Perfect. Cool. I will let you get on with that. Yep. And now rocker cover, because we need to extract a piece of material that shouldn't be between the spark plugs. So um, this is going to be a treat for you guys. There. Yes, it's um, in a really yeah. funny place. And I've got a funny thing, yeah, with things hanging around spark plug wells, it's not good. So, um, Can I the... give you a tip? Go on. To, to get this clip off, it's really easy, because it's snapped. Oh, it's completely snapped. Only on the clip part. I'll tell you what, that's what's happened to mine. Popped up. The, that's it. I was, we, you've seen a second, guys, but the sensor, the coolant temp, the engine temperature sensor, I should say, because it's not a coolant temperature sensor, it measures the temperature of the cylinder head, sometimes known as a cylinder head temperature sensor. It's held on to the actual sensor, the plug that is, uh, through this grommet, and there's a clip on the other side of the rocker cover, and that clip snaps, and it's only held down by friction. Mine's like that. Mine's exactly the same. So you can just literally pull this up, which is actually a good thing in some ways. You're not dealing with it because it's the heat. It gets to the plugs. So, uh, yeah, easy. Well, I'll let you get on with that. Yep. And uh, I'll get on with this. Right. Rocker cover time. We have to take the breather off, which is already half disconnected because that goes into the air box. Um, and it goes into here. Just pull it off. Okay. That's the number one thing. We're just going to put that down there because that's going to be our parts tray for now. Uh, the second thing is this plug. Now, because the plug is broken, I can actually crack it off. Um, but I'm just going to pull these leads out. And believe you me, you'll know where the leads go because they're all like the same length. As long as you keep them in the same place on the coil pack, um, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, and then just move. Well, preferably not in the region of the exhaust manifold because it's still boiling. So we're just going to move all of this over here okay at least, you, not, at least it's not raining you you get in there yeah at least it's not raining you get in there with that is that too difficult for you it just keeps sinking down yeah 
Is that normal? Oh, it's because it's deformed, that's why. The best thing to do is just to get it sealed as best as possible, because obviously you don't want it not going to sit perfectly. Yeah, I think we might need a new air filter because that's actually deformed quite badly. Uh, I might put some heat on that, see if I can mould it into shape. But I, I won't worry too much about that. That's that's decent. That's that's sealed okay. Um, sealing is the way, isn't it? No, I, I I just put the air box on that now. I would. We'll come back to that on another day because uh, I, it should be okay for now. It's it, it's what it is. Um, now. You've got all these. These are, by the way, um, they do not come out. They are captive nuts, so you don't need to worry about losing any of these. Um, you just take that hose out, okay? We want to just remove all these, which are they're quite loose anyway. Um, this wiring protector has come out quite a bit. I don't like that because that's the injection wiring. Um, but anyway, this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Get my screwdriver and layer up. There we go. Okay. Now, to be honest, because we've got a broken plug, we can do that. There we go. You see that? That's it's broken on the clip, and it's the same as mine. Mine's broken on the clip. They all go when you try and push the tab in from you're supposed to do it from that spark plug there. Um, they just break, so but they don't ever fall off, so it's not a problem. So again, just wrap that out the way. Okay, right, now we're in a position where we can take all the bolts out. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 bolts. There you go. Right, so uh, Nick's just fitting that. We have managed to find uh, a spare screw in my screw of many uh, Mark 1 for breaking spare screws, my scrapyard days. Right, I'm going to bring you here and uh, get cracking with uh, these bolts. I've got the cheat ratchet today because I'm not really uh, wanting to faff around. Remember, all these are captive nuts. They're not going to fall out. Obviously, because the um, the foam insulation is collapsing, I hate this stuff. It is absolute vile. Thanks, bud. And as I've been correctly reminded, they're all free, but we've got one on the side here being very sneaky. Now this is not a captive stud, so it will come out, there we go, keep that, put that in the box, now we're free. Now it's a question of just leering all this out the way and trying to leer forward, so if you just pull, to, if you pull towards... Do you know what you've undone? What was that? Do you know what, that screw you've just undone? Yes. It's for cover for the diamond belt? Yes. But it's actually, but it's actually connected to the rocker cover. Oh, it is. You sure about that? Yeah. No, it's the same. No, so goes through there. It holds the cover on, but it holds it to the rocker cover. But you have to take that bolt out to take the cover off anyway. But it's two things. So usually, I think this kind of, the idea of, the idea is, when you do a timing belt on one of these, you have to put a locking tool across the rockers. Now, that means you've got to take the rocker cover off. So Ford would stipulate you have to change the timing belt, water pump, and the rocker cover gasket, which is why that bolt holds the two together. You have to take it out. Just a really funny design exercise, eh? Do we need to take that out? No. No. That's completely free as far as I'm aware. No, that's just for the timing belt cover. It should come out. Right, so anybody who's got a Sigma, um, or even a Zeta, will know the frustration of trying to change the rocker cover. Because it's free, but we've got all this wiring in the way. This injection wiring is completely in the way here. So what we've done is we've disconnected the clips, okay? just push all the clips 
off the injectors, okay? And take the wire, the plug out of the throttle position, position sensor at the end, and that will all be very, very free and out the way. Now, Nick's gonna hold that where it is, and I'm hopefully going to be able to pull it off. But it will get caught a little bit. It is quite a frustrating exercise, this. So just take a few goes. Still getting caught. Oh, this is frustrating. Right, we've got it over. Well, basically, you've got to pry the cover back and then you've got to pull on the, the rocker. Is that completely free now? That should come out. There you go. Right, so I can show people. The trick is, you've got these, these uh, lobes that stick out on this side and it's hitting the timing belt cover. And you're going to have to pull this back <laughs> well, while pulling the wiring back, pulling this back and pulling that, it's a two-person job, really. It really is an absolute pain in the ass. Um, but we're, we're going to change that gasket as per course. Um, it doesn't actually look that bad, but they, they get rather flat over the years. Um, but we're going to put that on the side and we'll uh, have a look inside. And, uh, oh, dearie me, that's not very good. Right, and your core plugs. Ah, you've had your core plugs changed. These are not the originals, that's good. Somebody has changed them. It's a very easy job, but I've got the originals on mine. Look at that bit there. My God, that's waiting to drop into a cylinder. Um, I think I've told you a tale, guys, of how somebody, I'm um, putting his spark plugs in, um, actually um, cracked the porcelain of a spark plug, and that is a spark plug porcelain. And um, he took he, the next time he took his spark plugs out, this bit of porcelain, exactly this sort of porcelain, dropped into the cylinder, and guess what happened? Oh yes, it scratched the bore, he lost compression in that cylinder, scrap engine. And that's why you have to remove, you have to, I always, when I'm changing the spark plugs, I blow this area out, but it's very dry in here, usually oil is, usually oil, because of the way the engine is canted backwards at this angle. Don't ask me why they did this with the Sigma. The ZTEC is a perfectly flat engine, but the Sigma, they canted it back. So what you'll find is oil rarely goes to the front. What are you doing now? You're stubbing yourself on the rock. Honest to God. Idiot. You rarely get rocker cover leaks from the front. You get it towards the backside. Um, usually down here, and then it goes down here towards the exhaust manifold. At least we've got no uh, heat shield to take off. That's one problem. Uh, they very rarely have their heat shields because they usually fall off, like in this example. But my God, somebody has absolutely been to town with the spark plugs in this. Grief. Have you seen this much porcelain? Could have emptied it, couldn't they? They really could have emptied it. They really could have emptied it. We... Well, we know. A bit, bit of that could have gone in there. Yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> you don't know how you test it. You never know, but are we uh, absolutely sure that this is clean? Well, we've got a bit of plastic here. It's all this. What's this? Oh, that's the that looks ah, like a tag. That's the tag off the plug. <laughs> the tag. Well, that's also yeah. This this is the other thing. I don't think you, I don't think a magnetic pickup is going to pick up plastic for some reason. Um, let me see if I can get my screwdriver in there. You're going to need long nose pliers. Oh, I have got some. I can't be bothered to get them at this moment in time. There we go. Do we uh, risk? Uh, there we go. And that oh, is the missing um, bit of the plug. Yep. We can definitely say that that is the missing bit of the plug. That is also going in the bin. Obviously, I'm not going to use the ground as a bin. I'll pick that up later. Look at down to the little four. Just below the nut. I can't see that. Oh, that. Oh, there's something there. Right, there is a bit of porcelain. Can you see that, guys, on the left-hand side? Oh, boy. That is waiting to drop. Okay. What I'm going to do... Right, I'm going to get some nose ring pliers and a pick and gently extract that. That's not good. 
that was a, that's a disaster waiting to happen. It's waiting to drop into that cylinder. This is a really important thing, guys. Do check this before. If you ever take the rocker cover off or change in the spark plugs, please get a torch down into the spark plug wells and check you've got no porcelain hanging around. Right. I have to just switch this on. And uh, Nick's just cleaning up the faces. We've got to make sure the faces are relatively clean. It doesn't have to be super duper shiny clean. It just has to be relatively flat. Just make sure that we've got cardboard here because when I start firing, we do not want anything going into the engine. So here we go. Oh God, you see that? Yeah, he's got some random bits going. Up. Oh gosh! What's happening is they're going up and going straight back down again. <laughs> we'll get them out. You have to make. I tell you what. What it looks like is someone has over tightened the plugs, and then the next person to come along has almost snapped every spark plug. And that's why there's porcelain everywhere. Well, the least you can do is protect and make sure that it doesn't go into the cams. And that's the main thing. Um, if, if a tiny piece goes into the cams, I prefer it to go into the engine rather than going into the spark plugs because that's a death warrant but we're talking about minute pieces, but sharp pieces. Look at this, this is what's come out. Yeah, you don't want that going into the cylinder, but that will get sucked up by the oil. But that's the idea of the cardboard. Oh, I'm done. Easy. So Nick insists on taking the spark plugs out now we've cleaned all around the holes. There is no risk of damage now. Um, but make, make sure that you get it nice and straight on the plugs because I've got a feeling that when you don't go nice and straight, the consequences is broken porcelain. Um, go nice and easy. I'm us we're using a 3 8 ratchet and a, few, a 3 8 bar, but if you have to, get a half inch ratchet, a half inch bar, and a 3 8 to half inch adapter on that spark plug wrench, because a half inch bar, less wobble, um, if, you're, if you think a 3 8 is not good enough, or if someone's overdone it. Oh. Perfect. It's not got no... No, no, it's a bit dirty at the bottom. I'll give that a bit of a clean over, but that's okay. That's no problem, that can go back in. I'll clean this up and you can uh, take the rest of them out. Right. We've managed to extract all four plugs and they all look relatively even. It doesn't really matter which way they go because they're all Bosch plugs, uh, Bosch Super Plus. Although I think Bosch Super Plus is not the best, I have to say. I think um, NGK uh, tend to be my choice, but not everybody's choice, but um, no, they seem quite even. I have checked the gap. The gap is about 1.2 millimetres. Uh, and they all seem okay. Um, number two was the worst one to get out. Number one was a bit stiff. Um, you can see in there, there was a bit of oil around the seat. That's relatively dry. That's dry. That's dry. Well, a bit dirtier, but it, it, they're okay. Um, we've had a look down and it seems okay. Um, we have got the new style coil pack, so we can go to 1.2 millimeters on the spark plugs. If you've got the original old style, one millimeters, please, because they're not very good for, um, they're quite weak as coil packs, the originals. The replacement Bosch or Delphi ones can basically provide, they're, they're much more stronger. They won't crack and they can provide 1.2 millimeters at least. So 1.2 millimeters for a big fat spark, good for the emissions, good for your MOT test. Um, in terms of the cams, I'm really impressed. I think even, in, even my um, Sigma has got some light scoring. But actually on this, none of the lobes have got anywhere. It is indicative of a very 
very well maintained engine indeed and uh, i'm very happy with that um just had a bit of a clean around here as well i've got to put some hylomar just in the corners here when we applied the new uh rocker cover gasket um, but we're going to take the the old one off Have you got the new one around yeah. yeah do you want to go and get that and then um i can uh, peel this back uh, in fact i can't remember where to start off now we have uh, one extracted gasket you just just pull it off that'll be that and we have a brand new genuine ford gasket uh that is exactly what we like to see and we've got the parts number there packed on the 19th of april this year so they're still making them that's ridiculous so obviously i've i've got a feeling that this Rocker cover gasket is applicable for every single 1.6 Sigma or the 1.25. Um, I'm pretty sure about that, including the TIVCT models up to 2018. So I suspect that this is uh, still high in demand because they, they all leak after a certain age. Um, but all I would suggest you do is to clean up the faces just very lightly. OK, just go around with some contact clean or whatever you've got just to get it clean. Don't use WD-40, guys. You do not use WD-40 on any area you don't want dirt embedding. So just give it a nice clean up. Are you satisfied with my labour today? I am. That costs £56. This? Yes. You are joking. No. Oh my goodness me. I think you were robbed. No. <laughs> the, the, seriously, this sort of stuff is... It is what it is. You, you pay a little bit more for Ford parts because they last. The originals, they've lasted for 15, 20 years now. Um, the aftermarket ones, they're okay, but I've got a feeling, and I'll find this out because I've used an aftermarket one from Victor Rhines, um, about £20. I wonder how long mine's going to last in my car. That's interesting. Mine's done three years now, and it's okay. But... The, uh, the genuine ones, you know they're going to last. So it is how it is. You either spend more initially for a longer lasting product or something that is cheaper and doesn't last as long. It depends. Some aftermarket stuff is actually better than the genuine stuff. Quite rare, but it does happen. Uh, but can we I can ask just. A question? Yeah, go on. Is this one brittle? Yeah, it goes, it goes hard um, over time. It's quite flexible still. That's okay. I wonder if, whether that's been changed because that feels actually, usually they can snap. But what happens is, more or less, they go flat. They just go flat over time and they, they just can't seal properly. It's the problem with every rocker cover gasket. They just go flat. Bin of shame. Are you doing the bin of shame? That's my job. Okay. Shame. Go on then. Which one is it? Well, whatever, bit, those two there. Whichever one, the rubbish ones. Shame. There you go, that's how you do it. Right. Okie dokie. Right, there is a way of putting this in. Now. Oh, let me figure this out. Which way is which? Right. We've got the circular bits there, okay? For your cams, they go on this side. Okay, so just fit it in like that. Make sure it, you just need to do a little bit of tweaking here and there, but it will just sort of fit in rather nicely. Um, they're much uh, easier to fit than the old style cork gaskets, which just slide all over the place. But uh, see what I mean? You've just got to slide that back a little bit, and uh, it will it will start to sort of fall into place. Just make sure you get this bit correct. Um, I might have to just clean this bit. Um, the bit you've got to be aware of is the ends of the cams. We've got to put a bit of Hylomar. Some people put RTV silicon. You can put that on, but I prefer Hylomar because it's a non-setting. Um, I use it for a lot of uh, a lot of engine-related stuff. See there, it's just gone a bit funny. And there we go. It all sort of pushes in, and you just got to keep going round until it all sits really, really nicely. See, there's a bend there. See what I mean? I've done it too far. There's a bend from manu the manufacturer. And there we go. That goes in nicely. 
But you've fallen asleep now, viewers. Well, I'll try not to. I'll try not to uh, make people fall asleep. It's good ed educational stuff. Though. It is very good educational stuff, exactly. And people haven't seen me do this on my own focus. Um, and I'm now allowed an opportunity of showing people uh, how it's done properly as well. There we go. That is ready to be done now. So now let's go and put it back on. This is going to be a pain. Right, just stick the plugs back in before we start. We'll just sort of hand tighten them first. Learn a tip from obviously the previous person getting it all wrong. Um, it's really a basic exercise spark plugs, but people often get it wrong. They just rush and yeah, bad consequences happen. Could have knocked my bloody engine. Well, the, the thing is, if you hadn't have spotted that little bit of porcelain, that's what would have happened the next time you change the plugs. Um, it's happened before and it will happen again, sadly, but hopefully, no one on here will allow that to happen. Um, now I need to get my wrench. Where's that gone? Right. So... Do oh, this. do you know what another thing about the, what the garage said as well about the new car? No. Go about, on. About the temperature. The temperature, yeah. Yeah. They always run cold. That's why the temperatures. Because he, he had one. And said it'll be fine. The diesel, the diesel runs cold. No, no, no. That's not right. That can't be right. Any of you diesel fans out there, let us know. Does diesel run cold? Is that a fact or is that complete rubbish? The TDCIs. Yeah. Oh, I think that's rubbish. It needs to get to temperature. It's an engine. It's a, whether it's petrol or diesel, it needs to get to temperature. I don't know what that guy is talking about. They don't know. They don't know. As I said earlier, um, they said. It, the steering rack was um, they're playing the rack because they couldn't adjust the alignment properly for the tyre that's rubbish it's not the rack it's the outer the outer knuckle that's gone stupid gouges I mean how stupid is that that a tyre shop as I said before cannot use a blowtorch because they haven't got the insurance it's a tyre fitter tyre fitters who do wheel alignment you know the lock nuts on the, the trap rod ends, they seize straight away. So how they, how they cannot use a blowtorch? Uh, they must have, seriously. I wonder how many customers they've actually told, oh yeah, we've done, your full, you, we've done all your tracking for you, and they haven't. I think it's one of those places. And when they know that you know your stuff, they'll come up with some stupid yeah. excuse about the insurance. That is something typical. They'll charge you 40 pound for the alignment, and they won't do the alignment, and then you'll think, oh, why are my tyres wearing unevenly? Because they haven't done it. Well, that tyre cost, I think, 50-odd quid, and that was just a budget one. <sighs> Problem is, the tyres now, you're looking at 60, 70 pounds for a decent one now. Um, or even just mid-range. Even the 14-inch tyres on the Steelys, like on the CLs and LXs, they will cost you a good 50, 60 quid. Um, for a mid-range one, uh, a mid-range tyre. Well, budget to mid-range. You're talking sort of higher-end budget, lower middle-range tyre. Because yeah, on my Mondeo, I have got a Mondeo by the way, Mark III. Bridgestone, yeah. four of them from Alfred. Yeah. Three hundred odd quid. That's a two of five. That's ridiculous. And that was online as well. That was cheap. That was the cheapest. Reef. Right, now these are getting pretty tight now, as you can see. I would just nip it up, that's it, done. No more than that. Once they go roughly tight, it's not butted up yet. Don't over tighten them. There is a torque setting, but I don't do torque settings, I just nip them up. Nip it up, that's it. The thread on these is actually quite tight. It's quite a dirty thread. Maybe that's why we've got stuff. It's possible. I would just clean the thread, take the block off. Yeah, I would say so. Oh, oh my God, man. this is really... Usually you can hand wind them quite the way, and I've had to use my ratchet quite a bit. Yeah. I was going to say, maybe that one was like hard to undo. It was... Right, that's tight. 
and there we go done all the plugs done now for the hard bit now before you fit the rocker cover hence why i'm slightly out of breath i thought i'd crack a few bolts off now the exhaust manifold down here we've got a center bolt where my finger is in fact i need a torch but basically because the engine is uh curve around the back i'm just uh press that on where's that oh there we are it's got your uh it's got an I think, it, I think that's one of yours actually. Yeah. This, is, this is the thing when you work on cars, the tools are everywhere. We're mixing up tools. We're gonna have to do like a, a sort out right at the end. Um, but basically we have a bolt here, 15. That's a stud with a 15 mil nut on it. Then we have a 30 mil nut right at the top. Then we have another 15 nut there. Down there, down here oh sorry it's gone off there we go we've got another 15 nut there we've got another 15 down there that's it that's it four 15s and 113 now what i suggest you do is because we're taking the whole thing off crack that off with a 22 millimeter spanner if you've got um, a lambda sensor socket then you can use that but a 22 open-ended spanner saw that out but basically because of how awkward this is, I'll just show you now. What I would suggest is you get this on, okay? Now, to crack this off, you've got to bang it this way. Just hold it firm and bang it this way. There's no way I can get an impact gun in and doing it from the bottom is too hard. The bottom bolts, you can do this from the underside, but I, I prefer to contort myself because if you look at where it is, you've got to contort your back this way. It's the most worst job on a Sigma. Um, the exhaust manifold is just in a shocking position. <laughs> usually it's at the front, it's usually very accessible. Um, but that's what you need to do. You need to crack off with a hammer, maybe a breaker bar, leering away. I know that people say you shouldn't leer on the cams, but literally all it's going to require is putting that there and just leering forward on the ratchet it, if it works it works you're not going to crack your cams by doing that i've done it before like this um it took me ages last time but i thought i'd show that to you before we put the rocker cover back on uh, i am going to loosen those nuts off um before we put the rocker cover on uh and the lambda sensor It's a bit gassy, isn't it? <laughs> I know, it is very gassy. Oh, this is tight. This is tight. You have to keep hammering this as best as you can. Oh, that's just about budged. Some considerable length later. You, some people can say you can take this off when the downpipe is off the car. Just unplug the sensor. I understand that, but I've actually found that more difficult. Unless you've got a second person, well, I do have a second person, to stand on it um, while you undo it. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a fight. It's best to actually fight with things while they've got attachment to the car. And I've just, just managed to undo this sensor. Oh, thank God for that. You took a lot of bashing with that hammer. Some plus gas. Now I can just unscrew this whole sensor oh dear me they do get gummed in the wire will twist a little bit so you can undo the whole thing it might be a bit stiff on the thread but it uh, will come out it uh, will come out there we go done There is your exhaust reader because that's what it is. It measures the CO2 content, or the oxygen content of your exhaust, not the CO2, the oxygen content. I've just left it there. Now that is free. We can now continue getting these bolts off. I've actually decided not to fit the rocker cover until we've got the exhaust manifold off. So um, I'm gonna uh, break all these bolts off uh, a little bit more 
Now, the problem is because the power steering pump is at the back here on most normal models. I, the hose, I don't have that hose on mine because that hose would normally run down to my pump. But because this has got air con, that pipe runs to the back and it kind of gets in the way a little bit. Um, but I can try and get to this. And I have just started to actually crack these off. So um, I'll just continue doing that. There we go, bit by bit. There we go. Are we done? Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Just slowly getting all these off, very slowly. But I've never really had an issue with these bolts. They never really snap, strange enough. They're very well made, especially the studs, they never snap. There's always one, isn't there? That one down there. All the others are loose. That one, can you see it's starting to round through the air. Penetrating fluid, a wire brush, and we're gonna try and aim to get this socket in. So we're gonna have a, fifth, a 15 deep with an extension. Uh, should be able to, yeah. So we've got, we've got that on. That is not fully on. I'm going to smack it on with a hammer. Yeah, it won't go on fully. That's why it's starting to uh, deform a little bit. So I'm hoping I can get it on. We've got all new fixings, but uh, just getting this off. So make sure that that is smacked on to the actual base. I think when I used uh, the ratchet spanner just now, it wasn't quite on the end and I thought it was. A mistake on my side, but um, bang this on and see if you can loosen it that way. This, this is the bit where we say, did we do it with manual tools or did we give up and do it with the cheat gun? <sighs> so I've had to squeeze my tiny draper impact tool and we've got it on and I'll just press the trigger. <sighs> oh, it's gone. It's gone. Right, now the tricky thing is getting this gun out now, which is going to be a bit of a faff because now it's wedged. There we go. Now I've got to be honest with you guys, if you were doing this at home, you're just going to have to persevere with a hammer and a, a ratchet spanner because it's just so awkward to get to. It's untrue. Um, but now we've released that ridiculous bolt. Um, well, nut. They're all going to be replaced with new ones. Um, now all that's free. Now, before we take, we're not going to take anything off this side. We've got to jack the car up and get at probably the worst two bolts, which is the flange bolts that link the downpipe to the cat pipe. Right, here we come. That's it, make sure your jacking point is good. This is a jacking point, guys. Okay. I just don't like it when I jack it up and the car's sliding that way. I know, I know. It's all, it's, it is how it is. They will, yeah, it will slide that way. Don't worry, keep going. It is on a hill. As long as your hand brakes on, it's all good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, just put it on a bit higher, that's it. Because what will happen is <laughs> the back wheel's coming off the ground a little bit. That's all right. Right. Stop like that. I should. I'm not going to bother with that. I should be able to get this one. There. There is where you need to put it, okay, guys? That is where you put an axle stand on a Mark 1 because you've got this box section. So you've got the... The, the reason this is the jacking point is because you've got a box section here that goes adjacent and you want to jack up sort of there, okay? You want to have it supported there. I have to say, subframe's looking a bit crusty at the edges, but that's usual. Um, you've got to watch out for some of these brake pipes. They look a bit funny to me. Let me just... Mm, okay. Some of these brake pipes look a bit funny on this one. Um, but it should wire brush up. But uh, essentially, you should just let it go. Quite severe. <laughs> Oh, I was hoping that was going to be a bit smooth. I never seem to do it smooth. It's always a bit stiff, this. It's either on or off. Um, now you've got to do the other side. I'm going to leave you to do that. 
I've got to clean up this. Right, armed with plus gas and a torch. Here we go, just put the mat down. We've got the car on. That's all stands. Okay. Get under. Now, oh yes, we've got those two. One and two on the other side. We've got these rubbers that are special heat resistant uh, exhaust hangers because of the cat. Cat looks, um, ooh, that's the original cat. Yeah, well, this is the original exhaust. That's the original cat. Worth a fair few bob, I'd say, these days. Um, just going to cut under here, make sure that you have got... Um, well, don't, not actually... It is uh, well supported, by the way, guys, before you say. I Man, I'm a thin guy. The tyres are still attached to the car, so I'm not going to get crushed. Anyway, what we need to do, is so if I can get my other hand in... Let's have a look at these bolts. That looks crusty. Okay, and that looks crusty. <laughs> okay. Now with these two, we've got to be careful. I'm going to give these a bit of a wire brush up and a soak. So, uh, what are you doing? I'm not looking. Can you, uh, can you get a wire brush? Yeah. Is that okay? I've got one in my toolbox if you can find it. Is that yeah, alright? small one. Yeah, it's a tiny one. Uh, the one that looks like it's useless for doing anything. Um, if I just chuck my torch here. So you can see, you're uh, watching this nice and live. Ooh, crusty. I've known these to break off, unfortunately, from the cat and have them wee welded back on. Uh, I won't touch that too much. There's a bit of scabbiness up here, but it's just scabby. It will be dealt with. Um, these brake pipes, I'm a bit suspicious of. So I'm just going to have a further look at them in a in a bit, but we're uh, too many problems. Front subframe that could possibly be wire brushed back. Um, they just go scabby, but I reckon that might be resuscitated. It depends whether there's any holes. That looks like the worst bit. Um, mm, bit of a funny one that. Right, see if we can get the wire brush on. Now, the main reason for wire brushing this off is I don't care if these bolts snap because we've got new ones. Have we got new ones in the kit? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, well, it should come with it, to be fair. Um, and the gasket as well. I've got enough bolts anyway if these were to snap. I don't really care. They usually do. But the idea is you can find out if... We've got this 15mm. Yeah, that, that will fit. Right, I'll get my impact gun on this. A uh, bit of, I would recommend a bit of plus gas since we've we've got it here. Um. Right, I'm going for the grinder now. I'm not taking any prisoners. With ringing ears later, I have cut them off, and that should now be free. It will be with you. Just need to break the ends off, but basically you've you've cut those bolts out, and you might need to punch this out. But we can now take this out from the other side. Oh my goodness me! Got to be able to. Oh, it's hot. There we go. Done. Yeah, I can go in the bin. Done. I was very careful not to cut into this cat pipe at all because that would be another nightmare. You've got to be careful you don't do that because we're keeping this pipe. We don't want uh, any damage. But, uh, yeah, this flexi is uh, it's done. There's a hole somewhere in it. Now we can take it off. Now, we come back over to this side to take all these bolts off. <laughs> and we've got one bolt. This is This is interesting. The stud has come out with it because it's so stuck on the ends of the threads. Now we've got some new bolts, but that we're going to have to try and release that um, via a few other methods. So um, we'll keep that on the side for now. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> oh, this car is a bit of a fighting mess. Nick, you're giving me all the worst cars. Always. That is the centre bolt. That is the 30mm bolt that goes at the top 
at the center, okay? And then we've got another nut on the side. There we go, we've got another nut, and then we've got another one on this side. That's another nut. And then the, the bottom one, obviously it's done, that's done. Now it's a question of just sliding it back off its studs, and uh, it's quite easy. Uh, you take it down from the bottom, uh, Realistically, the problem is with getting the manifold past that, it's actually really hard. So you have to kind of do it from the engine bay side. You have to lift upwards. So we'll just uh, just make sure that everything is definitely off. There we go. And we need to wiggle this back. It will be tight. Oh, come on. fighting me there we go off it comes right get that uh, gasket off oh, it's quite it's fighting me this there we go oh. right gasket like that right we've got a new kit and the bolts I've got yeah and the bolts yeah that looks all good to me that's exactly what should come with the kit brilliant uh, at least I would advise this guys if you're doing this sort of a job please don't think you can reuse any of this stuff because I've had to cut two bolts off and we've got a bolt seized to the stud there's all sorts of things that go wrong with rusted bolts please get new ones you don't have to use them if you can get the old ones out but um, now it's a question of getting this out and what sort of a state it's in I think we can say that the uh, the support. This is just the support, guys. Looks like a suspension spin. No, it's just like a, a stainless steel casing. They all go like this eventually. Um, diagnosis. Um, yeah, we might have a bit of a leak from there. That should be. That shouldn't be like that. It should be sealed. Uh, you see this side is nice and sealed but this is rotten away from the end. This is what happens with the original. The originals are actually, I have to say, this is actually a bit more stiffer than my old one. My original one was, oh God, it, it was all over the place. It, literally, I took it off the cart and it went like that. Yours, as you can see, it's still straight, so yours still retains that flexibility, but I'm afraid that's your leak right there. So um, that's in the scrap pile. You can see I'm getting all dirty in the face. This is this is what Nick's car brings to the fold. Yeah, I blame you. Now, Scotch Bright, bit of contact cleaner, clean the faces up. Um, now it's difficult to see, obviously, because it's over the top. But try and get your face down there. Hence why I'm covered in dirt. Um, if you're not covered in dirt at the the end of this sort of job, you're, you're not working hard enough. Plus point. Uh, but uh, just put a bit down here. And I'm literally just going to clean the face up as best as I can. Now I can't see much, but the idea is that we just make sure that the gasket has got a nice clean face on this aluminium.